eat. Introduction During the winter season, we wear woolen clothes to keep us warm. Woolen fibers have a number of crimps, bends. Air enclosed within the woolen clothes does not allow body heat to escape and keep us warm. When we call something hot or cold, the question arises how hot or cold it is. The amount of hotness or coldness of a body is measured by a physical fundamental quantity called temperature. For example, in summer, if the day is hot, the weather report on the TV tells you that the maximum temperature recorded is 38.2 degrees Celsius and in winter, the weather report tells you the lowest or minimum temperature recorded is 6.9 degrees Celsius. You can easily make out the amount of hotness or coldness by comparing these two weather bulletins. Hot and Cold Our body has a fairly constant temperature and when you have fever, your body temperature rises. Hot and cold are sensations that your body detects or you feel with respect to your surroundings. During summer, your surroundings become hotter than your body and you feel hot. During winter, the surroundings become colder than your body and you feel cold. Hot and cold are therefore relative terms in relation to your body temperature. However, your body is not perfect in differentiating hot and cold. You can make the difference between hot and cold by sensation. Based on your body sensation, you use words like cool, cold, warm, lukewarm and hot. If an object or our surrounding is at a slightly lower temperature than our body, we say it is cool. If it is at a much lower temperature, it is called cold. On the contrary, an object having higher temperature than our body is called lukewarm or warm. And if the temperature is much higher, it is called hot. Take three containers and arrange them in a row on a table. In the first container, fill some ice cold water. Put some tap water in the second container and put some hot water in the third container. Dip your left palm in the cold water and dip your right palm in the hot water and keep them dipped for some time. Now, take out both your palms and put them together in the container containing tap water. The tap water will feel warm to the left hand and cold to the right hand. The same water appears cold and warm both. This is because hot and cold are relative to the sensation your body feels or detects. Heat and its flows Heat is a form of energy which when acquired by a body makes its temperature rise. When we light a gas burner at home to cook food, the chemical energy stored in the cooking gas gets converted into heat energy on burning. This heat energy is then used to cook food. Similarly, we can convert electrical energy into heat energy when we use an electric heater. If we rub our palms together during winter, the mechanical energy gets converted to heat energy and our palms feel warm. Thus, heat is neither produced nor destroyed but is a form of energy. It gets converted from one form to another. You are aware that any kind of material, whether a solid, liquid or gas, is made up of tiny particles called molecules. When heat is applied, the molecules of the material gain energy and begin to move from their position. In this way, the material begins to get heated. The movement of the molecules also transfers the heat in the material. The system of molecules is different in solids, liquids and gases. Heat flow in solids. Solids have tightly packed molecules which do not have free space to move. When solids are heated, the surface of the solid which is in touch with the heat source receives the heat energy and its molecules begin to vibrate due to the heat energy. As the molecules are tightly packed, the energized molecules vibrate against each other and pass on the heat to the neighboring molecules. In this way, heat is transferred in the entire body of the solid. This form of heat flow or heat transfer is called conduction. Solids that conduct heat are called good conductors or simply conductors. 
while those that do not conduct heat are called bad conductors or insulators the transfer of heat in solids is like the passing of the bus ticket from the bus conductor to the passenger sitting on the last seat the ticket is passed on from one passenger to another till it reaches the last passenger take an iron rod bar and cover one side with wax fix some nails on the wax coating heat the free end of the rod by using a burner or spirit lamp we can observe that as the rod is heated from one end the nail closest to the end falls down first due to the melting of wax by heat this is followed by the next nail and go on till all the nails fall down as the wax melts this shows that the heat travels from one end to the other in the iron rod this method of heat flow in solids is called conduction repeat this activity by using different materials such as wood glass copper or brass rod you will notice that while metals conduct heat other solids such as wood and glass do not conduct heat heat flows in liquids the molecules in a liquid are loosely packed as compared to solids that is why liquids do not have a definite shape like solids the molecules are free to move from their position when a liquid is heated the molecules in contact with heating source gain energy and begin to move from their place as these energized molecules move from their place the other non energized molecules begin to occupy their place and they too absorb the heat energy this type of heat transfer in materials in which the molecules move from their place to enable flow of heat is called convection the transfer of heat in liquids is similar to the bus passengers in a bus who get up from their seat individually and go to the conductor's seat to get their tickets each passenger individually receives his or her ticket by moving from his place to the conductor heat flow in gases convection also occurs in gases in fact places near the sea coast have a maritime climate with strong winds blowing day and night due to the process of convection in order to understand the convection in gases perform a simple activity this happens because the air above the candle absorbs heat and gas particles after gaining energy move upward this creates a low air pressure around the flame and fresh air is sucked in through the other hole to keep the candle burning the cyclic movement of air starts as convection current and the smoke from the dhoop patti or agarbatti is sucked in through the other hole along with fresh air similar to the activity performed is the phenomenon of land and sea breezes take a beaker and fill it half with water set up an assembly of a burner a stand a wire gauze and put the beaker containing water on the burner add a few crystals of potassium permanganate as the water begins to heat what do you observe the crystals of potassium permanganate move up and down in the water and begin to dissolve making the water purple in color this activity shows that heat is transferred within the liquid by the movement of particles molecules in a cyclic up and down manner this type of heat flow in liquids is called convection take a large cardboard box cut two holes on the top of the box in these holes attach two cylindrical cardboard pieces and paste them firmly take a burning candle with a proper base and put it below one hole and close the box tightly make sure that candle flame does not put the cardboard box on fire take a dhoop patti or agarbatti light it and put the burning part near the other hole smoke from your dhoop patti or agarbatti will be drawn into the box through the hole and come out of the other hole below which you have lighted the candle these breezes occur on the sea coasts and are based on the principle of convection during the day time land near the sea heats up faster than the sea water the air above the land absorbs this heat and moves up due to convection just as the air above the candle in the box moves up when the air above the land rises up it creates a pressure change and cool dense air from the sea 
comes to fill up its place. This mechanism of a cool breeze blowing from the sea to the land during the daytime is called sea breeze. At night, a reverse or opposite phenomenon occurs when the wind blows from the land to the sea. At night, the land cools down faster than the adjoining sea water. The sea water is warm and the air above the sea absorbs this heat. A convection current starts due to which the warm air above the sea rises up creating a pressure difference between the sea and the land. Air masses from the land blow towards the sea to take the place of the rising air. This mechanism of a cool breeze blowing from the land to the sea during night is called land breeze. Heat flow without medium Heat is a form of energy and therefore heat is transferred from its source to the surrounding without the need of any solid, liquid or gas medium. It is known that between the sun and our planet, Earth, there is no medium for lakhs of kilometers. The atmosphere is only about 500 kilometers thick which contains gases. The sun's energy travels through space where there is no medium like all other forms of energy. On reaching the earth, some part is reflected back from the atmosphere and the remaining useful part crosses through the atmosphere and directly heats the earth's surface including us. The sun's rays do not directly heat the air. This kind of transfer of heat from the source to another body without any medium is called radiation. To verify the process of radiation, recall the cold winter day. The air temperature is low and you feel cold. When you sit outside in the sun on a cold day, your body directly absorbs the sun's heat and you feel warm. However, the sun's rays do not heat the air around you. This is a clear example of radiation. In a similar manner, the heat from a bonfire warms you in a cold night when you stand close to it but the air does not absorb much of this heat. Take two thermometers in the garden. Hang one thermometer on the branch of a tree in shade such that its bulb is freely suspended. Dig out some soil in an open area near the tree on which you have hung the thermometer. Now, place the bulb of the second thermometer about 2.5 cm in the ground where you have dug and cover the bulb with soil. Support the stem of the thermometer by a stick or some other support. Leave the two thermometers in their positions till late afternoon. If it is a warm sunny day, the thermometer buried in the ground will have a slightly higher reading than the one hung from the tree. This is because the earth or ground is heated directly by radiation without affecting the air or the medium in between. Thus, there are three ways by which heat is transferred from one body to another. They are conduction, convection and radiation. Effects of heat Heat causes increase in temperature. Heat causes expansion. Heat causes change of state. Heat causes chemical changes. Heat affects living organisms as it may cause death to microorganisms. Measurement of heat Heat is a form of energy and is also called thermal energy. Heat is measured by its capacity to do work. Thus, heat is measured in a unit called Joule, named after the famous scientist Joule. We measure the degrees of hotness or coldness of a body as temperature. Thermometer is an instrument used for measuring temperature. In the 17th century, temperature measuring device was called thermoscope. It consisted of a wine container which was attached to an inverted flask with a long stem like neck. The round bottom of the container was slightly heated. This led to expansion of air inside which bubbled out of the wine resulting in a rise of wine in the stem like neck of the container. The thermoscope could detect appreciable change in temperature by the change of the wine level in the stem of the flask. In the early 18th century, Daniel G. Fahrenheit, a German physicist, designed the thermometer with mercury in a sealed glass tube. 
This thermometer resembled the modern thermometer and had 212 divisions. Later, mercury and alcohol, both kind of thermometers, started being invented and the system exists even today. There are two types of commonly used thermometer. One is an ordinary thermometer that may contain alcohol or mercury and the other is clinical thermometer containing mercury. Other than these, there are specialized types of thermometer used for different scientific and industrial applications. Temperature is measured in degrees by three different scales. The scale commonly used by people in cold countries like America and some European countries is the Fahrenheit scale after the name of the inventor of modern thermometer. This scale is divided into 180 divisions or degrees. Another popular used scale is the Celsius scale. This has 100 divisions or degrees. The third scale to measure temperature is called the Kelvin scale. This is used in scientific research. All common thermometers are marked based on the temperature of boiling and freezing water. Thus, in the Fahrenheit scale, water freezes at 32 degree Fahrenheit and boils at 212 degree Fahrenheit. In the Celsius scale, water freezes at 0 degree Celsius and boils at 100 degree Celsius. In the Kelvin scale, the 100 divisions begin from 273 Kelvin. In this, water freezes at 273 Kelvin and boils at 373 Kelvin. Degree is not mentioned as a convention. To verify the freezing and boiling points of temperature of water, two different activities can be done. Clinical Thermometer The thermometer that measures our body temperature is called a clinical thermometer. A clinical thermometer consists of a long, narrow uniform glass tube. It has a bulb at one end which contains mercury. Outside the bulb, a small shining thread of mercury can be seen. The thermometer uses a scale to give the reading of the temperature of an object or material. The scale we use in a clinical thermometer is Celsius scale, in which reading is noted in degree Celsius, which is also written as degree Celsius, short along with its number value. A clinical thermometer reads temperature from 35 degree Celsius to 42 degree Celsius. Reading a thermometer. For reading a thermometer, note the temperature difference indicated between the two bigger marks and the number of divisions between these marks. If the bigger mark reads one degree and there are five divisions between them, then one small division can read 1 degree Celsius by 5 is equal to 0.2 degree Celsius. The thermometer must be washed with an antiseptic lotion like Detol or Spirit. Then hold it firmly and give it a few jerks so as to bring the level of mercury down below 35 degree Celsius. Now, place the bulb of the thermometer under your tongue. After one minute, take the thermometer out and note the reading. It gives the reading of your body temperature. The temperature should always be stated with its unit degree Celsius. The clinical thermometer is designed to measure the temperature of human body only. The temperature of human body normally does not go below 35 degree Celsius or above 42 degree Celsius. This is the reason why the range of clinical thermometer is between 35 degree Celsius and 42 degree Celsius. This is a permanent mark on the stem at 37 degree Celsius, the normal body temperature. Actually, what we call normal body temperature is the average body temperature of a large number of healthy persons. Precautions to use a clinical thermometer. Thermometers should be washed before and after use, preferably with an antiseptic lotion. Before use, two to three jerks should be given to the thermometer to keep the mercury level before 37 degrees Celsius. While giving the jerks, care should be taken that the thermometer does not hit any other object. While the thermometer is inside your mouth, do not laugh or talk so as to prevent the breakage of thermometer 
which may release mercury. Mercury is poisonous and fatal to life. Read the thermometer keeping the level of mercury along the line of sight. The thermometer can be given small rotation to make the capillary and the level of mercury clearly visible. Do not hold the thermometer by the bulb while reading is taken. Laboratory Thermometer It consists of a very thin capillary tube of glass which is surrounded by very thick supportive glass walls. The upper end of the capillary is closed after evacuation and the lower end is drawn into a delicate bulb like shape with a thin glass wall. The range of a laboratory thermometer is generally from minus 10 degrees Celsius to 110 degrees Celsius. Converting one temperature scale to the other. Here we can see the relation between the three temperature scales. If in a thermometer mercury rises and the corresponding readings on Celsius and Fahrenheit scales are C and F respectively, then temperature minus ice point divided by steam point minus ice point, that is C minus 0 divided by 100 minus 0 is equal to F minus 32 divided by 212 minus 32. So, C upon 100 is equal to F minus 32 upon 180 and C upon 5 is equal to F minus 32 upon 9. Therefore, temperature in Kelvin K is equal to C plus 273. In the given relation, if temperature in degree Fahrenheit is taken on the left hand side of the equation, then the right hand side of the equation will be for degree Celsius and vice versa. Materials and their heating property Materials that allow passage of heat easily through them are called good conductors. Materials that do not allow passage of heat are bad conductors or insulators. Metals are generally good conductors while liquids and gases are poor conductors. It is important to know that the ability of a material to conduct heat depends on the nature and property of the conductor. Some materials that are conductors transfer heat very fast, while others take a longer time. Let us take the example of some common metals such as silver, copper, aluminium and iron. All are metals and are good conductors of heat, but they have different rates of conducting heat. The amount of heat energy required to raise the temperature of 1 kilogram of a substance through 1 degree Celsius is called its specific heat. You can say that the specific heat of copper is less than that of iron and the specific heat of water and air is very high. That is why they do not conduct heat. Metals that are good conductors having low specific heat absorb heat faster than conduction and cool down faster also by radiating the heat. This property of good conducting metals is used to make heat exchanger for engines, air conditioners and refrigerators. You may have noticed a black colored filter like device in front of car engines where water is filled up to cool the engine. It is called radiator. The radiator is made of copper pipes. Water is circulated in the engine through copper pipes. Heat from the engine is rapidly absorbed by the copper pipes which heats water. The heated water is then passed on through a fine network of copper pipes where the heat is radiated out. Thus, the cooled water is recirculated and the car engine is cooled continuously. Heat circulation in the atmosphere Sun's heat reaches us by the process of radiation during which the air of the atmosphere is not directly heated. The temperature of the air comes from indirect heating. The sun's rays heat up the earth and the objects on the surface of the earth by radiation. The earth having a lower specific heat than water or air heats up faster. The heated earth then radiates out its heat which in turn is absorbed by certain gases in the air. These gases retain the heat during night when the sun's heat is not received. It is due to this reason that the atmospheric temperature does not fall all of a sudden in the absence of sunlight. Thus, 
our atmosphere acts as a blanket allowing limited heat radiated by the sun to come to the earth also the atmosphere retains or holds back the heat and does not allow all the heat to escape this role of the earth's atmosphere is called the greenhouse effect it is beneficial for the maintenance of a constant range of temperature on the earth gases such as carbon dioxide methane etc trap the heat and are called greenhouse gases in the present time with the advancement of technology man has artificially increased the amount of greenhouse gases in the atmosphere under natural circumstances the carbon dioxide is 0.02% which is in balance due to the natural cycle with the help of green plants but man has increased the release of carbon dioxide methane and other greenhouse gases on the one hand and reduce the forests that absorb carbon dioxide on the other the result is that the atmosphere has warmed up over the years and this is called global warming global warming has its ill effects a slight rise in the atmospheric temperature may result in the melting of polar ice in the antarctic and arctic regions this may lead to increase of water in the oceans which may in turn submerge land at the sea coasts it would mean the sea coming in and reducing the land available to us it is therefore our responsibility to check pollution and prevent destruction of forests